Hi everyone, it's Ian here from Scene Group and in this video we're going to talk about what's new in Cavalry 2.2. The first feature we're going to talk about is OpenType. So to get at the OpenType settings we need to open a text shape, so double click on a text shape to get its settings up here and you'll see there's a new OpenType button. If we click that button we'll get a popover that will list all of the OpenType features that this font supports. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the title bar of this popover to make it a permanent window and then I'm just going to show you um, that uh, different fonts have different open type supports. So not all fonts support open type and some of them uh, have uh, lots of features, some of them don't have very many at all. Um, so it all depends on the font, just be aware of that. Okay, so when you have uh, the open type features up, you'll notice that some of them are dimmed. And the reason that some of them are dimmed is because uh, this font will not support this given feature for our input text. So for example, uh, subscript and superscript are not supported at the moment because we don't have any text that we can use those features with. However, I know for a fact that we can use those features with numbers. So if I add some numbers to our string, you'll see that these features have suddenly become available and we can choose them like so. You can also choose other things like old style figures or uh, tabular figures, which actually you can combine in this font. Uh, or we can just choose small caps, which will uh, change the, the non-numeric characters. Um, to apply an open type feature to just selected characters, you just need to select a character and then choose the feature. Uh, so for example, we can choose the VA and then we can choose small caps um, if we wanted to. Um, so that's kind of it. That's um, the open type feature uh, in uh, Cavalry 2.2, uh, except that because it's Cavalry, uh, you can do this in a procedural way, which is really quite powerful. So if we open a different scene, and in this scene, we have a spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet is uh, just a, a list of uh, positions and names. So we have first, second, third, fourth, and then we have four names in there. These are plugged into two text fields, uh, which is in a duplicator to pull the data down from the spreadsheet. And then we have uh, that inside a layout group, so it's nice and centered in the composition. So if we want to make our, what they're called, ordinal indicators, um, <laughs> numeric indicators, I've forgotten. We'll find out later. <laughs> the ST, ND, RD, and TH. If we want to make those superscript, uh, we can do that procedurally. So if we double click on our position text field, uh, this has an input. The input is the spreadsheet, of course. Now that means that open type is dimmed out. And the reason for that is because the input might change. And so we can't set uh, open type features on text that's changing. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. So when this is the case, you need to set open type via a style behavior. So that if you hit the plus button next to style behavior, you'll see there's an open, nope, apply open type style behavior. So if we click that, We'll get a new layer. If we double click the apply open type uh, layer to get its settings up, um, we, by default, the font feature is access all alternates. Uh, uh, we can change that to uh, superscript, which is what we want here. So we choose superscript. Um, and you'll notice that the first and last uh, characters in this uh, in this text, uh, they are now superscripts. And that's because the default is the first and last indices. Uh, we actually want to use a preset here. So we can go up to the presets menu and we can go down to ordinal indicators. That's what they're called. Choose that and that will change us into the regular expression mode. And then it will just uh, set this regular expression, which finds all of these characters, T, H, R, D, S, T, N, D. And it will apply whatever font feature we have set here. Now you can actually have more than one font feature at a time if you want by just clicking the add button. You a second one. Um, but in that way, you can set these procedurally. So I haven't needed to go in and select that text and uh, choose um, uh, the open type feature. Where this gets really, really cool is if we then go and edit the spreadsheet. So let's, uh, let's put fifth position in here and we'll put me in there, say I came last, and then we reload that spreadsheet. We've got a new row in the app and the TH on that uh, fifth um, has automatically become superscript. So you can set up a rule and then Cavalry will just take care of everything for you. So pretty, pretty fun. Uh, okay, a couple more features in text. Uh, I'm not gonna demo them, but we have paragraph spacing in here now. So just the control, uh, the gap between paragraphs, obviously. And then uh, we have a new justify alignment. So that will justify align every line of text except for the last one. Right, the next thing we're going to look at is gradient along a stroke. No, it isn't. <laughs> The next thing we're going to look at is uh, text along a path. So if I give myself a path and then a piece of text, I'm just going to edit the text, make this a bit longer, like so. The way that you set up text along a path is very, very simple. Just scroll to the bottom of the text settings and you'll see text path and it says drag in shape layer. So we can drag in our pencil line that we just drew and that will attach the text to the path. Then we can 
move our text along the path if we want to. And the only other thing that really you need to be aware of here is that um, uh, vertical alignment uh, is the vertical alignment. And that is basically where the line is in vertical alignment, that's where the path goes. So it could be at the top, middle, bottom, or you can baseline align it. So text along a path, it's not new in Cavalry, but what is new is this path looping. So if I uh, get rid of the pencil line and I create an ellipse, make it a bit larger, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to alt-click on the fill preview and to turn that off, it toggles it, and then I'm going to alt-click on the stroke preview, which toggles that, uh, just so we can see through it. And then I'm going to drag the ellipse shape onto the text path here, turn on loop, and then we can just have our path looping around that path. Believe it or not, this is new. <laughs> okay, uh, so we can change the alignment here. And then, of course, being cavalry, we can just swap out the shape if we want to, and it all just works nicely. Okay, so uh, that is um, text along a path. Um, and now we can move on to gradient along a stroke. So uh, let's just give ourselves a path. And over in the Stroke tab on that path, we have a new color mode. We can click single color, go down, and we can choose gradient. And this is just a standard cavalry gradient. The gradient goes from the start of the path to the end of the path. Let's make it a bit thicker so you can see a bit better. It's a standard gradient in cavalry. You can animate the um, you can animate the colors and the position of the stops and all that kind of thing. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to select the attribute. So just click on the on the gradient to the name side of the attribute editor, and then we're going to go over to the library palettes and we're going to click the options menu here and choose set gradient from palette, which is going to give us um, just a nice gradient without us having to do much work. Um, this means we can play with the gradient mode. So we can choose RGB interpolation. We can choose HSV short path, which is it's a bit nicer, I think. Uh, or we can go full on word art psychedelia and choose HSV long path. We'll just choose short path for now. One of the great things about uh, gradient along a stroke in cavalry is that we can use dash patterns with it. So if we had a dash pattern, like so, see we get some nice gaps in our path. Well, there's another way to get gaps in a path in cavalry 2.2. Nice segue. Uh, if we draw ourselves a shape, like so, lots of intersections in it. We can add a new behavior. Now the new behavior is called not. So if I just go and choose that from the deformers menu here, you'll see that a gap has been put into the path where the, it self intersects effectively. Sorry, I should say contour. So this is a single contour, single line effectively. And where that path, where that contour crosses itself, a gap is created. There aren't many settings on not, so basically you can choose whether the first uh, line, the first intersection we go over it or whether we go under it, uh, or whether there are gaps on both. So, And then we have a gap width, basically. So the gap width can be used just to, to refine, literally to refine that gap width. Uh, you can pull on this, so you can add a random or a noise, in fact, or, you know, stagger, whatever you want. Um, or you can use this to create some cool kind of write-on effects if you want. Okay, so that is not. Uh, next up, we have multi-stroke. So if I just give myself a path again, and then go into the stroke tab, and we can now choose to add um, multiple strokes to the same path. Now, this used to involve adding, you, if you, basically, if you wanted another stroke on this, uh, you would have to duplicate the path. You would feed it into a custom shape, bit of a workaround. However, we can now have multiple strokes on the same shape. And that's uh, this multi-stroke multi attribute at the bottom here. We could just hit plus and go stroke. That gives us a new stroke layer. And then we can, we can basically set the settings for this, this stroke. And then if we change the original path, obviously both strokes update because they're both attached to the same geometry. So in this way, you can create a uh, kind of uh, sleeves, socks, whatever, clothing if you're rigging, uh, or just uh, interesting looks. Um, you may have noticed when I hit the plus button on multi-stroke that there was something called a stroke duplicator there. So let's load that up. So over on a stroke, I'm going to turn the main stroke off just because it's going to make it easy to see what's going on. Then on multi-stroke, I'm going to hit the plus button and then choose stroke duplicator. Now by default, the stroke duplicator gives us three, uh, three strokes. I'm going to ask for five. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, um, add this palette to the, to the composition as, um, as an array. And then I'm going to plug the array color into the stroke color. Now, if I make the strokes a bit thicker, how come we can only see one? Well, we can only see one because they're all on top of each other. So we can 
get around this in a few ways. We could, for example, add a stagger to the width or noise or random or whatever, or we can um, add stagger, random, <laughs> noise, whatever to trim. Uh, just something so that we can see through or, or so that the strokes don't take up the entire path, right? So um, if I turn on trim and then I right click on end, go add behavior and choose stagger. The only thing I need to do is just go into the stagger graph and flip that and then if I put 20 in the start, uh, you'll see that we now have our different strokes with different colors. So this is a really nice way to create some uh, interesting custom effects. Now the strokes all go from zero and they go from zero to whatever the stagger value is. So 20, 40, 60, 80, uh, and then the end of the path. Um, they're all on top of each other at the beginning. And uh, this creates some anti-aliasing nasties. So you might want to add a stagger to the start as well. Uh, however, what we're going to do is we're going to add a stagger to the width. So if we go into a behavior and we add a stagger in here again, see that we get uh, this effect. So let's just increase the, the width there. And then of course you can, you can flip the graph or you can choose whatever you want to do in here. Next up, we have stitches. So stitches is a fun new kind of tinned effect and just make this a bit larger. I'm going to turn off fill, turn on stroke, and then I'm going to go into the deformers menu and I'm going to choose stitches. So what stitches does, if I turn off uh, this, what stitches does is it creates lines on a shape. So we go uh, lines from the bottom uh, arriving at the top and then uh, we can choose a distance. So we can choose a distance. So we can choose how far apart these lines are. Uh, we can rotate these lines if we want to. So we could do this, for example. And then we can increase the spread. And what that does is it adds some distance between each line. So you can start with a really kind of um, close together lines and then they'll space out the further down you go. And then we've got this thing called the, the disconnection multiplier. And what this does is it takes the distance between lines. So let's say that's, that's one, right? That's one. Um, and we multiply that distance by this dis disconnection multiplier. And then if we find an endpoint within that distance, we then connect to it. So as we increase this number, you'll see we connect more and more of our lines. And in this way, you can create a kind of one continuous path that represents a shape. So it's not always the case, actually. In fact, you'll see that we have another path start, another contour, sorry, starting here. So in this case, we actually have two contours. And it's because with uh, concave shapes, you actually can't create one path that fills the whole thing because you'd need to go back on yourself and we don't uh, we don't allow that so um so in the case of stitches we will split the, uh, the 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 shape into into two so that we can um so that we can basically add, a, add another contour there so once you have this uh, kind of um pretty sharp uh harsh uh stitch pattern uh, what you can then do is just add some uh, path processing if you want to in cavalry so for example we can uh, we can hit resample path uh, and we can uh, resample as Beziers, for example. We can turn off Simplify. We can resample as Beziers, um, or we can kind of create a kind of weird effects, whatever you want to do in here. Um, but yeah, uh, we can resample it as Beziers to get kind of like a kind of scribbly kind of effect if you want that. Um, or we can say add bevel to it. So if we add a bevel here, we get a nice round shape. We can choose uh, chamfer if we want to, uh, but what we can do is uh, we can just increase the radius um, until we're happy with um, with what we've got. Um, okay, and that is stitches. To finish off the video, I'm going to just go through four uh, new features that are kind of unrelated to what we've talked about before, mostly. Um, so the first one is uh, previews up in the asset window here. So if I roll over a an asset, uh, we get a preview as a tooltip. So uh, this means that you don't need to find them in the Finder or Explorer or just drag them into a composition to see what your images are when they're named in really unhelpful ways like this. You can just mouse over them. Uh, we can also do this with compositions. Uh, so if you hover over a composition, you'll see a preview of the content of that composition. This also works with spreadsheets. It actually works with any asset apart from sound files at the moment. Okay, so the next feature we have is called Quick Masks. Now, uh, Quick Mask Mode is uh, something that will be familiar to After Effects users. Um, it means that um, when we add a shape to to the, to the scene, uh, it will be added as a mask to whatever layer is selected. So I've got this background shape selected here. If I add a circle, we just add a circle to the scene. It's as simple as that. However, 
If I double click on the circle tool, it turns yellow. That means quick mask mode is turned on. And when quick mask mode is turned on, I can then draw a shape in the scene like so. And that is now added as a shape to the background shape. And then I can keep, I can keep drawing shapes in here and they will all be added as masks like that. So that is quick mask mode. To get out of quick mask mode, double click on the tool again. You're now no longer in quick mask mode. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna show you is some changes to path offset. So if I draw ourselves a path, go over to the deformers and add the path offset deformer, like so. I can open this. And for the first time, we can now offset open paths. So this is an open path because the ends aren't joined together. So if I choose offset and I just make this larger, you'll see that the path is now kind of expanding from both sides. And we have an open paths style here and we can choose a cap style. So we have flat at the moment, we can choose round, we can choose projecting, or we can do something a bit weird, which is we can join the two ends up like so. <laughs> Okay, so that is um, a path offset and open paths. If I actually, if I draw ourselves a closed path like this, and then I connect the path offset to the editable shape like so. So you'll see that we can do path offset. So this is the normal path offset that has existed in Cavalry since version one. However, we can now uh, offset closed paths on two sides. So this is new. So you can make donuts from any shape basically. Okay, so that is path offset. Now, the last feature I'm going to show you is the new range fall off. So if we uh, just create ourselves an ellipse, pop that into a duplicator, I'm going to change the mode to linear, and then we'll change the size mode to step, and we'll just increase the count that we have here. Something like, something like that. Um, and then I choose the ellipse shape here. I'm just gonna go over to the fill tab, right click on color, go add behavior. I'm gonna choose color blend. And by default, so I'm gonna choose uh, two different colors in here. We'll choose, we'll choose yellow, and then we'll choose, at the other end, we'll choose uh, blue, why not? Okay, um, so they're all, they're all set to yellow, that's because, um, uh, the strength is uh, set to 100% here, um, so we can go from blue to yellow. However, uh, we can use, um, so so traditionally, I suppose, we've got a fall off here where you can kind of move this around and uh, choose uh, where, what value you get from the, um, from the, uh, from the color blend. Um, but we've now got a new fall off um, and that fall off is called the range fall off. So the range fall off basically operates on, um, uh, well, a percentage or specific indices. So by default, the, the mode is specific indices and we're choosing the first and last, or we could choose the third one, or we could choose the third one to the sixth one, anything like that. Um, and uh, you can, you know, comma separate them. So you can go one, I want one, four, and seven. Uh, oh, six, sorry, <laughs> like that. Or we can choose a percentage mode. And so percentage mode basically chooses a percentage of the items. Um, so it could be text, could be uh, items in a duplicator, anything really. So it chooses a percentage of the things that you are affecting. And then you can then offset this. Now, something that's really fun about this is that you can then use a graph to attenuate this effect. So we've got a graph in here and you can attenuate this. So um, you can just create looping animations like this really, really simply. Uh, for example, if we were to right click on this and then choose add behavior and choose uh, frame behavior, uh, then that's just going to automate at, or animate automatically forever, like so. So um, you can choose any shape of graph you want, of course. Uh, so starting and end values being the same is obviously going to be um, uh, pretty good. But um, uh, yeah, you can choose what, what, whatever you like, basically. Um, and that's uh, that's it. Those That's all, all the new things I'm going to show you. Uh, finally, um, for anyone working with variable font, there is a new variable font demo scene. Uh, uh, but uh, this just, just basically shows a setup of using um, oscillators to affect the, um, the weight of a, a font, basically. Uh, so check out that if you're interested in variable fonts. Uh, but there's no, there's no new feature there. It's just um, uh, improvement in, to, in how you set it. It's just an example of how you can set this up in a, in a nice way, basically. Um, and that's it. So hopefully you enjoy Cavalry 2.2. Let us know how you get on.